Welcome to Mormon Book Reviews, where an evangelical encounters the restoration. I'm your host, Stephen Peinecker, but this is a special MMR, Mormon Media Reviews episode. Why? Because we cover all media that isn't books, goes under the MMR banner. And this is not an episode where Rebecca Biblioteca is my co-host. She is my guest today. Welcome to the program, Rebecca. Thank you so much. I'm wearing so many different hats. I'm happy to be your guest today. <laughs> I don't know. You're you're getting big. You're going on Mormon <laughs> stories. You're doing. Well, you're, you're, you're going to leave me in the dust soon. I'll tell you. I uh, think that's impossible, Steve. Nobody, everybody, eats your dust. Nobody can leave you in the dust. <laughs> <laughs> well, folks, this is really exciting to me because uh, many of you probably are not familiar with my other guest, and is Landon Brophy, who uh, is a uh, somebody that I've actually known for as long as I've known Rebecca because we're all members of the same book club, the Good Book Club. Uh, Landon, welcome to the program. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, we definitely uh, met uh, at the same time, and and it was a unique uh, a unique uh, visit that we had. <laughs> as we, I, I I seem to recall you out playing with a dog and throwing a frisbee or something in a <laughs> video and showing it to us. So yeah, it was definitely a a, a new uh, experience there. <laughs> well, uh, yeah, and that's and this is all kind of a new experience for all of us, and it's a real new experience for you guys because the reason why I'm having you on the program today is that you two done went and made behind my back start your own podcast <laughs> I, I didn't know which i think is pretty cool i think it's really awesome that you both started this podcast and the name of the podcast is called mormonish um i'm going to toss the first question to landon because you all hadn't uh heard from him before uh landon um before we talk about this podcast in particular i think it's important to make perhaps you just give a little background uh, to the audience to kind of give us a, just kind of let you know where you're coming from. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, well, I was a, an active Mormon, grew up active Mormon, uh, had a wonderful gr uh, life as I grew up, uh, wonderful family, enjoyed the church. I was very strong in the church. I went on a mission to uh, Indiana. Uh, and and there, as I, as I came back, I, I joined the military. I was in the military for several years. And at that time, I, I actually you know, I was very committed to the church. I, I was a high priest when I was 25, served in several bishoprics, and uh, just really enjoyed the church. I, I was a very strong member as, as, I, as I grew up and as, as I raised my family. It was a great, great way as I was raising my family. So as I, as I uh, got a little bit older, though, I started to, there was just some things that started to to sit on my shelf a little bit that started to, to look not quite right to me. And, and so I, I decided that I was going to go on a journey here and I was going to figure out, you know, what, what was really going on. Uh, and I think it all started when I first uh, went to, uh, I was in Sunday school and I was reading uh, the book of Abraham. I was looking through the pictures there and I just the day before read about uh, the, the Rosetta stone and I was going, Oh, well, nobody could read, uh, Egyptian back when Joseph Smith translated this. So I was going, well, obviously Joseph Smith was a prophet and, and he translated this. So all we've got to do is get people who can read Egyptian now to look at that. And I thought, oh, I'm the first person who ever thought of this. Uh, so I, 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 I went home that, that afternoon and I went and looked up on the computer and I was like, oh, wow. I went right to the BYU site because that was a trusted site. And I read what the BYU archaeologist said and I went, oh, wow, Th this is a problem. Uh, this does not say what he said it said. And so that started me on, on, on a journey. And so I took each of the books, uh, I took each of the main scriptures uh, for Mormondom, uh, you know, the Old Testament, the New Testament, the Doctrine and Covenants, and, uh, and the Book of Mormon. And I took a year on each one of those. And I, I started reading everything I could about them. And I didn't look at church sources necessarily, but I didn't look at anti-church sources. I just wanted to look at sources about the time period uh, and learn all the information I could. So I looked up archaeology, linguistics, um, uh, all the different things that you, DNA, started DNA, biology. And I just started looking for answers. And I really thought as I started looking that I would, you know, that it would reaffirm my faith. And I found that it actually did the opposite. As I started learning these things, I was finding that all the sciences were lining up and the things in the church were not. And so that started to become very difficult for me. And eventually, um, I, I, I guess it was when I was reading uh, 
Bushman. Uh, my brother was a was a bishop at the time, and he said, "Oh, I've I've heard this uh, book from Bushman is very good book to read if you're struggling." And so I read that, and as I started reading through it, I said, "Wow, these are the things I was struggling with that I was told were not true as I grew up, and now here I'm finding." in Bushman's book where it says, no, we knew this, this is true. And, and, and that really is, is the point where I just said, oh, I can't, I can't do this anymore. This is, it, to, to me, this is not, you know, it, it, broke my, it broke my faith right then at that point. So uh, that, that kind of started me uh, in this kind of a lonely place uh, because I had this information I'd been studying for years, but I couldn't talk to anyone about it. And so eventually um, I was on Reddit, uh, ex-Mormon Reddit, and I was looking through it and I saw this picture of someone with the book Sapiens. And uh, I said, I said, uh, I just read that book and I was going, wow, that was a fantastic book. I really want to talk to someone about this. And that happened to be Rebecca. And so I, I, I texted her, there, there was some uh, people saying, oh, you ought to start a book club because she's a BYU librarian. And so I, I, I DM'd her and said, I'm interested. If you're, if you're going to do a book club, I'm interested. And so we kind of got together. We didn't know anything about technology. We didn't know how to start this book club. Uh, but we, we found a guy, uh, uh, Bruce from uh, California, who said, hey, I run a lot of these. Uh, I'm in. I'd like to help. And so the three of us kind of put together a, a book club. And, uh, and our motto kind of became, well, now we know what we don't know let's let's find out what we do believe um and so we started to 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 look into that and that eventually led us as we started to to reach out to find some of these people to talk to us we started saying well, god these people need to come on a podcast and we said there's really not a podcast for once you once you've reached that point where you're maybe a little past the anger you're past the confusion and you go, where are we going to go now? How, where do I, how do I fill all these different voids? And so we, we came up with Mormonish, and our intent there is to meet with people uh, who are doing different things and moving on on the other side of Mormonism and talk to them and find out what are you doing and what direction have you found that you're going to move into now that you've kind of gone past that, uh, that faith challenge that you had. So this is the thing, you know, folks, this is not an anti-Mormon program that I have. And no, and I don't consider your what you're doing anti-Mormon. Oh, no. um, I I don't, I don't, I'm not, my channel is not about doing anti-anything. It's more about like, okay, like you guys would better describe yourself as post-Mormon. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you feel like you've graduated, but you also did learn a lot of things in your journey. And, and there are things that you would look at with being a raised Mormon and attending that church that you would look back at with, with in positive things terms you can also recognize some of the beautiful things that the church does and it has had an effect on your life and you've moved past the angry ex-mormon phase maybe the atheist phase that some people are in or they're or whatever and you're 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 kind of engaging now it's like okay well i gotta kind of rebuild a shelf or rebuild something a foundation in my life in which i can kind of um maybe better understand how to deal with the world now that I've moved on from a, a faith uh, tradition and of course we uh, you guys uh, uh we did an interview and we kind of discussed that. And I want to just, these, these episodes are going to be coming out around the same time. So I want you all to get the one, two punch of this, these conversations that we're having with each other. Um, and so I think that's, what's so fascinating. And, you know, and, and that's Rebecca, <clears throat> you know, I, I, I want to ask both of you, uh, first of all, and, and Rebecca, you can answer this question is what does Mormonish mean? What, 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 what are you trying to get out of that name? Yeah, no, that's a great question. And I've always said, when I call myself a post-Mormon, I always say the word Mormon is still in there. I am a Mormon. I mean, you you literally can't, you can't wring it out of me. You know, I was raised, I am my entire past and not just my past, but my present and future. I have um, active LDS children. I have a son on a mission. I am, you know, but post-Mormon Mormon-ish. I just love that word because I still am. I'm still, you know, around it every day, impacted it every day and interacting with people, be it parents, children, friends, ward members. I am Mormon-ish. And so I just think it sounds more positive. And the tagline for the podcast, Mormon-ish, is finding joy on the other side of Mormonism. And like you said, you 
we, our audience can be a nuanced Mormon. Maybe they're still, they are going to church, but maybe they're finding just their things that they're involved in or their thoughts are gravitating, gravitating a different direction, but they're still in. Maybe they're completely out. You know, maybe they are in that phase of being an ex-Mormon where they're a little more, you know, working through some of those things. It, everything is okay. It's Mormon-ish. And so the people that we're talking to are at all different, I mean, we talked to you, right? We interviewed you and you're a never Mormon, you're an evangelical. So, but I think there's a lot to be learned from anybody as far as, you know, what amazing things are you, what have you found on the other side? What are you spending your energies on? What advice can you give to people? How can you give people hope, um, positivity that you don't have to just be stuck in a certain place? You can be on this journey in a positive way as a Mormon-ish person. So that's kind of where we're at, if that makes sense. Landon, do you think that kind of explains it? Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. Uh, you know, sometimes you hear people say, you know, when you when you leave the church, why can't you leave it alone? How can you leave alone something that you grew up in for 50 yeah. years? I was LDS. I was an early morning seminary teacher. I was in three bishoprics. <laughs> I was the scoutmaster. The, I, everyone I know is is Mormon. My family, my, my cousins, my nephews, everyone is, is in the church. You, you don't get that option to leave it alone. You're going to be invited to baptisms. You're going to be invited to uh, mission farewells. You're going to be involved with these things. So what the church does, does matter to me because it affects my family. Mm -hmm. I see, I see this, these things affect everyone around me. So I have to be involved still. There, there, there's no option there. And at some point you, you say, well, I, I kind of want to be involved because I want to understand what is going around, it, especially in Utah, when, when you yeah. live in Utah, it, it affects your neighborhood, all your neighbors, your friends are all chosen by whether you're going to church with them or not. There's a big impact. And and when you when you are post-Mormon or once you decide to leave the church, you lose that community. And that's where we were so devastated and, and we we're going, I don't want anyone else to go through that. I want to, I want to have a community for them but they're all going through the same thing as I am. They've still got to be tied to that family and mm -hmm. they've still got those family members and those neighbors and those people they work with that have an impact on their life. And so that's what Mormonish is, is we're still, our, our background is that just like if you say you're Jewish, yep. you're Jewish <laughs> because you were, you, you know, you were born into, into it and, and you, you can never get away from it and, and we'll never get away from it. And, mm -hmm. and, we don't necessarily want to get away with it. We want exactly. to support our family. Yeah. Well, I was at a homecoming this morning yes. <laughs> for a niece, you know, and there I was, I'm at church. I'm singing at the top of my lungs. I'm enjoying my niece's talk. I'm, of course, I really went for the food, right? Uh, but yeah, you know what? And I am more than happy and thrilled that she had this accomplishment in her life. And it's incredible for her. And she's so happy. And I was so excited to be there in support. Yeah, so I yeah. think that's a misunderstanding about people that are nuanced Mormons or post-Mormons that they're, you know, her, maybe yeah. I'm not, you know, I'm right. happy to support my family and what was really important to my niece. So you have a lot of just recently sent your son off to his mission. Yeah. So yeah. on his you mission, know. that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Mormon yeah, and a lot of us that, that have left, we we really wanted to be part of it. We wanted to stay in, but you started finding out that you know if if you believe a certain way, you just can't. It, it it's okay. just too hard. You know when you can't go to the temple because you don't believe certain things. Right. Even if you want to participate, you're not going to be in any you know any kind of of place where you could testify or any any teaching position or anything like that so there's very little you can contribute at that time but you know i wanted it to be true i really tr tried to, to to make it work but i couldn't so now i'm trying to make it work on the outside but now that i'm on the outside i have found some new things that i never would have discovered being in the church that have just changed my life uh we're very outdoor oriented uh, now and uh, we go and to me the outdoors is my temple I love to spend Sundays if I can go out in the into the canyon somewhere and I'm looking at the beautiful earth the things that were created it just I, I'm just in awe and I go I get way more out of this than I did sitting in church on Sunday it's a different way it may not be for everybody but it's it's how I find my my spirituality because I'm just in awe when I see these things so 
we're trying to help people say, here's some alternate ways that you can that you can find that that hope and that peace. Wow. Yeah. You know, this is the thing, you know, I talk to people like when I'm talking to other Christians and stuff like that, I'll be like, you know, asking a Mormon to no longer be a Mormon, it would be like asking an Irishman to no longer be Irish. It's so part of the culture. I tell people, I said, John DeLynn's a Mormon. Sandra Tanner's a Mormon. They're all, you You guys are Mormons. You always will be Mormons. It's 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 deeply woven into your DNA, you know, literally. And it's just so, so part of who you are. And I think that's the most important thing for Christians to realize that, first of all. Um, you need to acknowledge the importance that Mormonism is in their lives. And you just need to deal with that, okay? And accept that, okay? You're not going to change them. You just got to love them and just try to understand them where they're at and then go from there, okay? So you need to be respectful of their culture and their institutions and just everything they built. Like I tell people, I said, listen, they made the desert bloom. You can say what you want, but they made the desert bloom. And and the other thing is, is, um, is just the importance of you guys also recognize that Mormonism will always play a role in your life. That is part of who you are. And you're trying to find a place for people who, um, especially those who have left, but they, they don't... They don't necessarily hate it. They kind of appreciate it. And you need to find a space for people. Because see, this is the thing. Like I I, I go to the ex-Mormon subreddit and it can get very toxic in that world, you know? And and, and it's so funny because I'll even post something and be and, and when, early on, like when I'd say evangelical, they'd start attacking me because anything that had anything to do with faith yeah. had to be bad, right? Well, now, now they've been a Mormon stars. Now that people know who I am, but I got a sense of like an anti-religious bigotry that was there, which I understand on one level, but also it's like, no, 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 no. You got to stop, pay attention to what I'm saying and doing and don't judge a book by its cover. And I think that that's what's so important is to be able to have these adult conversations, right? It's not a black or white thing. I'm not going to, I people do not have the right to say, this is why Rebecca left. She left because of sin or Landon left because of this. It's like, no, no, you need to talk to Landon and you need to talk to Rebecca and hear their story and find out where they're coming from. And I think that Mormonish can be a great bridge for, hey, if you're a true blue Mormon, rather than uh, just think, well, I'm going to give the reasons why they left, maybe just check out their program and hear what they have to say. Perhaps it will be insightful to even your faith and your faith journey as well. Uh, Landon, what do you say to that? Uh, I, I agree with that. I think, uh, you know, some of the things we've looked at doing and, and just our last podcast was on traditions, uh, you know, traditions that have been so important to you all your life, especially in, in the LDS church. You know, you have these milestone events that happen. Uh, you have the baptism at eight. You have the, the as, a, as a young man, you have the uh, priesthood ordinations at 12, 14 and 16. I know they've kind of changed that now. Uh, you've got the mission, the marriage, you have these milestones that you follow. And all of a sudden, you don't have that anymore. But with your children, their cousins have that. And the grandparents are always, oh, we're going to go to their baptism or whatever. And now your family doesn't have those traditions. So how do you create new traditions? How do you find new ways to uh, address that and, and to build that community? Because those rituals are important in, in, in people's lives. You have to have those milestones but we just have to find a different way to celebrate them. So we've tried to come up with ideas and point people to different things that they can do to help them to have that same, that same experience, but just outside the, the, the church, they're doing it on their own. You have to recreate it from scratch. That's a difficult thing to do. So I, I'm just really curious because we really haven't talked about it that much um, is what, what, um, you, you kind of given me some information here, but like, what was the initial conversation? Like who came up with the idea that we need to do a podcast and and, and we need to call it Mormonish or dis, discuss with me just the, the, what got this whole ball rolling? I think it was sort of the, so many people in our book club that we've met and it's a virtual book club. So they're from all over and we zoom in together once a month and we talk about our books. So we have a couple hours where we talk about the books and then we have what we call a mix and mingle because we're trying to recreate the old three hour block, right? Well, in talking to just all these members, diverse from everywhere, we're just like, God, they are doing some really interesting things. I mean, so different, the things that they're involved in, the things that they're putting their energies into now, maybe more on the other side of Mormonism. We're like, God, these stories are incredible. And then we also, um, like you said, we were on ex-Mormon or post-Mormon social media. And it seems like sometimes people there are 
you know, a little lost as far as what do I do now? My family, I'm the only one, or I'm being ostracized or, you know, where's my community? You just, so we just kind of saw these two things. We're like, Hey, wouldn't it be awesome if there was a place where we could introduce lots of people to, you know, some of these amazing people in our book club, like Steve, some, you know, some other guests that we'll have that are just talking about their lives and what they're doing. It kind of is a positive, you know, gives people hope. It's a very positive thing, can sort of form community a little bit. I think, Steve, you said something and when we interviewed you about how it's so important to find a community, because then when you're coming from that place of you've got a posse, somebody's got your back, you're, you're not defensive when you interact with others. You feel like you're okay. Someone understands you. They know where you are. You're not sort of desperately alone. So that's kind of... Um, sort of a concept too that we thought and then Landon came up with the term Mormon-ish um, just because you know we can't leave it can't leave it alone kind of a thing we're just ish so that's that's kind of how it do you have anything to add to that Landon I think that's kind of just we've been kicking it around for a while and with some of our other book club members about just let's just talk to people and hear their stories yeah I, I think community was the key um yeah. we, we'd have people come in and obviously people come into the book club at different times and they're at different places and and you know they'd come in we do the book club and then we have what's called a mix and mingle after right. where we all stay on and talk and you know, we had people just busting down crying because yeah. they said, I, I have no community. I have nobody right. to talk to. And we were like, talk to us. Let, yeah. Let's get together. And we, we've we now, I don't know how many people, but we try to get together. Anytime we have a new member, we try to say, where are you at? Can we, is there any way we can connect? And, and we try to go to dinner. We try to go to a show and we just try to form that community to give them. Because I know when I was going through it, I was so alone because I had no one to talk to. It was like, you, you can't tell anyone when, when you're going through this because you kind of become the black sheep or whatever. <laughs> and, and so I was so alone and I, I, I needed someone. And I said, I don't want that to happen to anyone else. And so I think it was really the community. We just said, there are so many wonderful people doing so many wonderful things. And we've run into, we've got several never uh, Mormon people like yourself. Uh, one right here is a card that I have from one of our uh, book, uh, club members uh, that was an, a never mo and she's uh, going blind but she does uh, greeting cards or a Christmas card she does all kinds of cards and she sent us these and and they're beautiful I've now mount them and, and and tape them and we've just seen so many things she did a class and taught us how to draw and stuff uh, uh, we did some uh, uh, some uh, sure. You want me to show my draw? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's going to say it's a meditative drawing. Yeah. Meditative yeah. drawing. And she taught us how yeah. to do this. You know? Over Zoom. Oh, yeah. Over yeah. Zoom. Yeah. So we, we wanted community, and Mormonish is just a way we can reach out to those who don't necessarily just read. You know, the Good Book Club does a lot for those who read. But yeah. we, there's, there's people out there that don't read that need a community too. Let's see if Mormonish can, can accomplish that. Yeah, well, that's great. And that's kind of what my channel is, too, is like it's yeah. got book in the title, uh, yeah. but it's it's become much more than just books, which is fine because then it makes it you know accessible to everyone. Because like you said, not all reader, everybody's uh, are readers, but I will say le uh, readers are leaders, you know, so that's the important thing. It is important to read. Um, but I, I I think it's so cool that you are uh, you you guys have found your community. You've built your own community and now you're kind of outreaching to other people to have them come on your program and have these conversations. I think it's really important I don't know, that we talk, you know, and uh, we talk things through. And, uh, you know, we all, like Paul says, we all look through a glass darkly and we need to acknowledge that we just don't know everything. We can't know everything, but it's so fascinating that what you've done with your book club and then that's now it's morphing into you guys doing this, this, this thing is that really, you're really doing this as much for each one of you as for anybody else. This is really part of the journey that you're on. Yep. A absolutely. And, and, uh, we just want we want people to know if you need a community, we're here, uh, you know, join us. We will, we may not be the people that, that you're uh, want to want to be best friends with, but somebody in, in our book club, somebody uh, in Mormonish is going to be able to, 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 to fill that role. Uh, it's, it, it's wonderful to see. We don't care where people go when they, when they go out, if they want to go back to, to the church, that's fine. If they want to be an atheist, that's fine. If they're gay, that's fine. We don't care. 
we just want to welcome people and say, you know, we know what you've gone through. Let's let's love each other and be there for each other and support each other, no matter which way you go. Mm. Rebecca. Yeah, I think you said it absolutely correctly. And I think especially at during the holidays, which is what we're coming up to and where this is going to air, you know, that that is a time where you can all of a sudden feel alone like very quickly <laughs> when you're surrounded with people that don't quite see things the way you do. So it's important, like Steve mentioned, uh, that you have a community, somebody behind you, that you can feel that you can interact with others with somebody who's got your back. So I think it's very important. So I'd like for you now, of course, we don't know exactly when this is going to air, but maybe you can kind of preview one, some of the people that you have interviewed or also that you have scheduled to interview, maybe kind of tell us what's coming down the pike for your channel. Yeah, that's good. Let me see. So our first episode dropped two Fridays ago and we just kind of said, who the heck are we? <laughs> so Landon and I kind of told our story, like, who are you guys? And and I it was kind of fun because it, it, um, it was on the same day that I went and did my first Mormon Stories book club on John DeLynn's show. So he, I didn't expect him to do this, but he said, oh, we got Rebecca here and she's got a new podcast. And I'm like, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know? So it had a little bit of an announcement there, you know, so it might be on the radar a little bit for people. So that was really fun. And then the one that we just, our special Black Friday edition, uh, we did, like Landon said, all about traditions, you know, losing traditions, creating new traditions, holiday traditions, because that's a question you see on on post-Mormon social media all the time now. Like, what do I do? Is it okay that I recreate the manger scene with my family? You know, extended family when I I am moving away from Christianity or is it okay if I do that? You know, and our answer to everybody is it's okay. whatever you want to do is okay. Whatever feels good, you know, whatever, whatever feels right to you. So that was an interesting episode to do. Um, we're going to be talking, well, we talked with Steve, of course. Um, we're going to be talking with one of our book club members who has her own podcast called Where Will You Go?, her name is Marty Lynn Nielsen, and she's kind of an expert on negotiating conversations with people that have differing views than you. So we thought that would be a really good one during December. She has some techniques, um, just ways to phrase things that you can kind of communicate, you know, as we're talking to family that might have some different points of view. So uh, Landon, can you, I think maybe there's one or two guests we have coming on in December, and then we'll push into January, but who else yeah, can you we've, we've got, uh, let's see, we've got uh, Monique, uh, who oh. we met uh, out at a, a, a dinner theater. We went to a dinner theater together and Tom won the dance contest. And <laughs> afterwards, we, uh, we we hung out a little bit and we were talking to this gal. And and uh, the, the next day, I, I went on to the Facebook page to say, you know, uh, hey, we really enjoyed the show. And I went and I saw her Facebook and I started clicking through it. And I said, Oh, she sounds like she might be transitioning out of the church. Yeah. So I just reached out to her and said, you know, where are you at? And she said, no, I, I really need uh, uh, some friends. And she's a very talented uh, PhD in uh, uh, theater, right? I think is what yep. she's in. Yep, and, in theater. She's yep, got so we're going to be talking to her about what she's been doing. Uh, we've got uh, DeVace. Uh, we're going to be doing yep. a little special with him. Uh, the, the, Yep. So we'll that'll be coming out on uh, New Year's Eve, uh, yeah, right before like to end the year. So yeah, and uh, then yeah, we have we'll... we have um, another uh, member of our book club um, named Bill Knowlton, who has yep. started a apparel line called Ally Parent Apparel to support and let everyone know that you're an ally um, for children or for anybody. So he actually gave us some merch. That was nice. We're, you were wearing that in the interview. So again, somebody that is on the other side of Mormonism and he has now become more of an activist and he started an entire apparel line to support, you know, the LGBTQ community. So, you know, we, we just, diverse amount of people that we have coming on or it's really exciting right. no, very well, that's very exciting just to have you guys there's you're up and coming you're talking to people of course i'm sure i could i, I as you guys were telling I'm like oh this person would be good for him i should tell you all, <laughs> <laughs> you guys would be a great uh it would be great to have um you know us maybe i can help you even book some guests as well um i just want to know uh you know you're only two episodes in and you're still uh, you know smallish uh, mormonish smallish right at this point uh what kind of uh feedback have you been getting from people <laughs> well wanna... let's see oh yeah okay so <laughs> like i said john gave us a little shout out for that first one you know so we had you know 
fairly good number of views for our first one. So, and then not too bad on our second one. And we had some positive comments on our first one. On our second episode, it dropped Black Friday. So, you know, a lot of people are busy. I, I went on the site and said, oh, we have one comment. And I scrolled down. Okay, we only had one comment, but if I can only have one comment, this is the comment I want because it was from Radio Free Mormon. <laughs> oh, starstruck. And he's like, something like, good job. This is awesome. You know, and I'm like, wow, well, if we only want, get one comment, but it's from him, that's amazing. So that's kind of fun that somehow ended up on his radar a little bit. So maybe someday we could have him as a guest. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. Yeah, and I'm sure he would do it. You know, he came up with would. Great. Great. Oh, yeah. a great person to have on there. So I am really excited about all this. And I just want to ask, uh, kind of like, uh, since we are in the holiday season, this will be airing right now. Um, since you are, would you say you're post-Mormons, um, what does Christmas mean to you now as post-Mormons? Landon? Very um, well, I, you know, I've had to shift a little bit because, uh, you know, to me, I, I kind of describe myself as as a Christian atheist. I guess <laughs> um, I I I don't I don't necessarily believe that that Jesus was the Son of God, but I do believe that he was a great philosopher, and that the things that he teaches are are what I want to follow. I I believe in turning the other cheek and 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 love one another and those things that he taught, and so I can still celebrate Christmas. You know, for for those those things and for the the gifts and it becomes maybe a little uh more secular you know you turn a little more towards the tr the other traditions of uh you know sleigh rides and and family and those type of things as opposed to just focusing on on the church things but i i don't think it's changed a whole lot for me um the meaning because it's it's always a time to just celebrate with other people uh goodwill and and i can do that it, it doesn't it doesn't change me in that sense. Rebecca? Yeah, I think um, absolutely. I had that question for myself. I collect, you know, little manger scenes. I thought, huh, you know, do I still display these now? And I thought, of course I do. I mean, you know my story. I say that I've always been PIMO, you know, physically and mentally out. I've always kind of looked at, you know, all the stories, kind of like what Landon said, you know, it's historical and still beautiful and so much meaning. And so many people live their lives based on those lessons and, and the things that you can attribute to all those stories. So I have absolutely no issue at all celebrating, you know, the Christmas story and everything it's meant throughout humanity and just really focusing on the gratitude aspect so much, you know, so much more. So yeah, I also don't have any problem celebrating. I, li I like what you said, Landon, a, a Christian atheist or yeah. an agnostic. Maybe and that's I don't believe in Santa Claus, but I celebrate that yeah. as well. So it, right. you know, I can, I can celebrate those things and, and look at them as traditions yeah. that have been in our family and I can celebrate them. So. Oh. Well, and it's funny because um, my husband and I, we've always gone to all kinds of different Christmas celebrations at other churches. Yes, we were church hoppers, even, yeah. you know, as we were still attending, you know, the LDS church, we were like, oh, we feel like we just need a little more. Let's see what else we can find. And especially during the holidays, we would go to all these different churches. One of my very favorite memories a few years ago is going to a Christmas Eve program at a Presbyterian church, which was absolutely beautiful. I can't even describe. It was just like almost otherworldly that they had a homeless man come forward and sing, um, Oh, holy night. I mean, we lit candles. My hair almost caught on fire with the person behind me. I mean, it was just, but it was just this event that I'm just like, this is incredible. Is this what churches have been doing out there? It was it was just amazing. And we've gone to, you know, black gospel Christmas programs. Well, we're going to go to Tom's, uh, Tom's. In that. To, that's right. Singing in a black gospel choir. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it is the season. I love to go to hand to the Messiah sing alongs, you know, and all of that. It's, it's just wonderful. And just gives you an amazing feeling, whether you consider that a religious feeling or just a feeling of humanity and celebration. It's all part of it. Are either one of you planning to go see David Archuleta perform uh, Christmas uh, while he's touring in Utah? I think it's sold out. Isn't it oh. sold out? I know that Landon's wife, Melinda, who books all the tickets for when we do things as a couple, she's really good at getting in there and getting the event. I think she said it was sold out and he's playing all over the place. So that's yeah. kind of amazing that he's selling out. So maybe wow. he'll do a TV special or something or online or something. Yeah, but, if yeah. he's listening and he wants to send us tickets, we'd love yeah. to. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we're Mormonish, we're huge. And if you want to give us some tickets, we would love to represent, you know, we'll give you a shout out um, to our two right. viewers. <laughs> 
So yeah, we're Mormonish. <laughs> now Steve could do that. Steve would be the one to give tickets to. He could do it. So <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I had a blast today talking to you. Yeah. I want to wish your endeavor uh, Godspeed. I hope that it goes really well. I want to just thank everybody who's been watching. I want to wish all of you Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays. Uh, Jesus is the reason for the season, right? <laughs> and just to, uh, just to have a fun time. Even those of you who have transitioned out of faith, enjoy the season. Find joy in your life. Uh, find joy with your friends and your family. And for all those you appreciate, we just finished up Thanksgiving and now we're heading towards the, the, the Christmas season. I, we talked about in my interview where I experienced seasonal uh, affective disorder during the holidays. I'm able to now celebrate them in a much better state than in the past. I just want to uh, encourage everybody to uh, have fun, enjoy the, the holiday season. Uh, before I go, Rebecca and Landon, was there anything else you wanted to share with my audience? I think just say happy holidays to everybody and be grateful and enjoy friends and family. And it's a beautiful time of the year. And, and thank you for having us, Steve. We, we really appreciate it. So folks, I had a really fun time today. Um, I just want to remind you, for those of you who'd like to financially support the channel, there are links for Patreon as well as uh, PayPal, as well as the merch store, mormonbookreviews.com. Also, don't forget to uh, hit the notification button and the bell so that you'll be informed when a new episode comes out. And just remember, the most important thing is all the voices of the restoration will be heard here on Mormon Book Reviews.